Welcome to our All Saints Day celebration or this year, 2018. Our readings for this morning include Revelation chapter 7, verses uh, 9 through 17, and uh, 1 John 3, 1 through 3, and Matthew 5, 1 through 12. We will sing, uh, A multitude comes from the east and the west, uh, for all the saints, and behold, a host arrayed in white. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you heard of the ancient library of Alexandria in Egypt? They say that there's a saying that when it burned, generations of wisdom were lost that, uh, that were not rediscovered until the Renaissance. There was even a recent movie made out of this, uh, this story of the end of the library. Well, the library was more like what we think of as a college or university, with many students and teachers reading and discussing different topics. Uh, it did have lots of scrolls, but, uh, but uh, not, not a building full of books and a librarian shushing people to be quiet uh, all the time. The truth is that, that this library uh, suffered more from budget cuts for higher education and financial neglect than from an actual burning. Although, uh, since it lasted for almost 600 years in a, in a major city of the Greek and Roman Empire, it is a, had an interesting history and, uh, and an interesting ending, just not a <laughs> catastrophic fire. So did the, the closing of the library send the world into the Dark Ages, as, as some claim? Well, it's interesting to consider how knowledge is passed from one generation to the next, how much of our current culture and technology of our own making, and how much is built on the foundation of, of the past, even the ancient past. What would happen if all of our electronics suddenly died? I know that, that many of you have seen some major changes uh, in, in, during your lifetime. How many of you want to go back to a time without our modern conveniences? Well, maybe some of them, but would you want to do without a refrigerator or a microwave? How long would it take for our society to convert back to wood-burning cook stoves or, or something low-tech? Would we even have the manufacturing knowledge to be able to build them? If we lost all our computers, how long would it take for us to recover? Statistics and studies show that an area hit by a major natural disaster, like, like Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, or the recent fires of, our, of Okanagan County, uh, can take 10 years or more for, for the community to recover. How much longer would it take if we lost all our, our modern technology? My point is that, that most days we go along thinking that uh, we got where we are by our own work and smarts, and we don't, consider, <laughs> we don't consider what's been passed down to us by previous generations. Uh, while we, we have amazing technology and knowledge that, that we could barely imagine 40 years ago, there is knowledge that has been lost. How did Noah build the ark 4,400 years ago? Would any of you be able to do that? How did they build the pyramids without, uh, or any of the wonders of the ancient world without modern machines, cranes, and, and the, uh, the heavy equipment that we are so familiar with today? This knowledge has been lost. We could just as easily lose the knowledge that we have, especially if something wiped out our electronics that have taken over our lives. We wouldn't be where we are without knowledge being passed down and taught from generation to generation. We would still be in the Stone Age, as, as some remote tribes are today. It is, uh, it is similar with faith. Faith is not the same as knowledge, but it's similar. While the Creator is, is evident in creation, we can't know Him clearly without, uh, from creation alone. Every culture used to believe in a creator, 
but their knowledge of the Creator uh, had had uh, drifted, gotten gotten confused over time as they drifted away from Him to the point where where many most of the world had rejected the true Creator. But God told Moses to write down the history so that it could be accurately preserved and passed down in the nation of Israel, and then and then released to the world after the Messiah. It is in God's word that we most clearly know the Creator and our Son, and His Son, our Savior. Since Moses, God's word has been carefully preserved and copied and translated. It has been passed down and taught to every generation. Who taught you? Who told you Bible stories before you could read? Who taught you Sunday school and catechism? Who led you to study the Bible as an adult? When we hear the word saint, uh, we we, uh, probably think of the big names, Peter and Paul, James and John, the other apostles, Saint Nicholas and Saint Patrick. There's churches named after them. There's a few more that we still remember. Uh, God even refers to his Old Testament people as saints, his holy ones. But God's word also shows us that they were not holy. Noah was a drunk. David was an adulterer and a bad father. Peter was a loudmouth who denied Jesus, his best friend, in his darkest hour. James and John wanted to call down fire and brimstone on a town. Paul put Christians in prison and had them killed. They all had their doubts. They were all sinners. And then they were washed in the blood of the Lamb, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God declared them to be holy saints, just as he has also washed you in the blood of the Lamb and declared you to be holy, a saint. You were brought up by your parents or grandparents or a loving friend to know this good news. You have been saved not by what you have done, what you have done or what you do, but by what Jesus has done, by the word of God that changes you from a sinner into a saint. And he is still at work. The Holy Spirit is living in you to strengthen your faith and help you to live holy lives. Knowing that you have been saved by God's word, you strive to do his will. Love him with your whole heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbors as yourselves. We especially love them by by not growing weary of sharing the good news about Jesus. They can be saints too. All sins can be forgiven. The worst sinner can be a saint by God's command and, and calling and washing. God's word gives us many examples of this. Don't grow weary of sharing this good news. There is, still more, there is still more room in heaven. When we live there, all the sins will be gone. We'll live in peace and harmony. We will be holy as God is holy. And we will live forever with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. With, with all the saints gathered around his throne, worshiping him together. What great news. That's news worth sharing. There are many who still need to hear it and to to know that they can be saints too. They can be part of this, this future. And just as with our salvation, so with our witness, it is it is God's work, not ours. He speaks through us. He gives us the words to say. He opens the hearts and minds of those who listen. As the Catechism says, He calls, gathers, and enlightens by the Gospel. If they refuse, it is their fault, not not yours, so you don't have to worry about whether you're doing it right. God is at work through you. He made you a saint, and He has promised He will preserve His saints, the Church, until Jesus returns. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.